Dancing with Marjorie's Ghost Nobody was surprised when Conrad Sharp's wife, Marjorie, died. Conrad Sharp was a mean man, a bully, and a bragger. He was too lazy and too stingy to fix the roof that leaked in the spring or the door and window frames that let in the howling winter wind. But he expected his wife to keep the house warm and comfortable. Her hands were rough and red from working in the house and working in the yard. All day long she worked, and late into the night. The neighbors always said that for each year Marjorie spent married to Conrad, she seemed to age too. So no one was surprised when, one cold gray day as autumn turned to winter, Marjorie Sharp died. The neighbors said it was the only way Marjorie could get any rest. But oh, how Conrad wept at Mar Marjorie's funeral. Conrad Sharp always liked to be the best at everything. The biggest, the loudest, the fastest, the best. And if he'd never thought to be the best husband, why that was no reason he couldn't be the best widower. He went to Kelly's general store and bought the most expensive suit for everyone to see him in, and the most expensive dress to lay Marjorie out in. He bought the most expensive coffin from Gilbert Allen's casket shop, and he threw himself on the casket when the undertaker closed the lid, because Conrad Sharp wanted to make sure everybody saw what a fine casket it was. He was careful, though, not to wrinkle his new suit. Conrad wailed and sobbed and carried on all the while the casket was lowered into the ground, so that everyone would know what a devoted husband he had been. Then he invited everyone back to the house afterward for food and drink and remember Marjorie, though he'd never been willing to pay for a party while Marjorie had been alive. Oh, Marjorie, poor Marjorie, Conrad said the to the neighbors. Do you remember how she loved to dance? The neighbors remembered. They remembered Marjorie dancing before she married Conrad. There never seemed to be enough time for dancing, Conrad said, though the truth was that he was too disagreeable to like music and dancing. Oh, if only Marjorie could come back for even one night, Conrad cried out. I'd swear I'd dance with her to her heart's content. A cold wind came howling then, where none had been before. Noisily it shook the boards on the Sharp's house, and came in through the cracks by the windows and down the chimney and blew out the candle by Conrad's chair, and then went away. In the sudden stillness, Conrad realized everyone was looking at him. He rubbed out his eyes and repeated, If only Marjorie could come back for even one night, I swear I'd dance with her to her heart's content. Way, way down the street, the neighbor's dog started barking. Then, closer neighbor's dog started barking. And closer, and closer, till the next door neighbor's dog was barking. Till there was a sound, like someone scratching at the sharp's front door. The neighbors all looked at one another, and at Conrad. To prove his courage, Conrad got out of his chair by the blown-out candle and walked to the door and opened it. There was nothing there. Except on the dusting of snow that had covered the front walk since everyone had come in, there were footprints. Footprints that came from down the street, up the front walk, and ended at the door, with no one there. His hand shaking, Conrad closed the door and bolted it and said, a third time, to prove that he was cold, not afraid. If only Marjorie could come back for even one night. I swear I'd dance with her to her heart's content. The door flew open, bursting lock and wood alike. There stood Marjorie Sharp in her fine new dress though she had no shoes. Since they wouldn't show in the casket, 
penny-pinching Conrad had buried her with bare feet. Her hair was unbound and strained out behind her. And though she was pale, she looked more beautiful than she had in years. With never a word, she held her arms out to her husband and Conrad, to prove he was the bravest man there, asked, Why, woman, would you come back from the grave to dance with me? Silently, solemnly, Marjorie nodded, and Conrad stepped forward. He put his arms about her body, which was as cold and as hard as the autumn turned into winter ground, and together, while the neighbors watched with eyes gone wide in terror, Marjorie and Conrad Sharp danced. Around and around they went on Marjorie's well-swept floor, to music none of the neighbors could hear. Or maybe they danced to the howling of the neighbor's dogs. After an hour, Conrad said, you came back for one night, and we danced. Surely we've danced to your heart's content. And he made to step away. But Marjorie wouldn't let go. And Marjorie wouldn't stop dancing. One hour turned to two, and the dogs continued to howl, and the sharps continued to dance, while the neighbors watched with bodies made heavy with terror, till the candles had burned low and the clock struck midnight. Then Conrad said, You came back for one night, and we danced all night. Surely we danced to your heart's content. And he made to push Marjorie away. But still, Marjorie wouldn't let go, and Marjorie wouldn't stop dancing. Hour after hour, the dogs continued to howl, and the sharps continued to dance, while the neighbors watched with minds made numb by terror, till the candles burned out, past the setting of the moon, till the sky began to grow light with dawn. Then, pleased with himself, for he was sure that he'd gotten the best of Marjorie's ghost. Conrad said, You came back for one night, and we danced all night and into the next day. Surely you've danced to your heart's content. And this time, he gave Marjorie a great shove. But still, Marjorie wouldn't let go, and Marjorie wouldn't stop dancing. She danced Conrad out the door, no matter how he struggled, and down the front walk and into the street. None of the neighbors dare follow. And the last they saw of Conrad was through the open door. They saw his pale face, and they saw the tails of his new coat blowing in the wind as he danced with Marjorie down the street. A few minutes later, all at once, the neighbor's dogs stopped barking. Once the sun was high in the sky, the neighbors followed the footprints in the snow. Down the street those footprints led, and over the hill, and they didn't stop till they came to the cemetery, where the dirt was mounded neatly over Marjorie Sharp's new grave, just as it had been left the day before, and there the footprint stopped. In the years that followed, come cold dark nights as autumn turned to winter, the townspeople often asked themselves what had become of Conrad, but no one dared to dig up Marjorie's grave to learn the truth, for fear of what they might see.